We're going to talk about one of the rarest pairs of LVC 501s. This is the 1967 501 episode featuring the history of the Hate District and the Summer of Love. There are a lot of San Francisco y things. It's debatable which is the most San Francisco ish thing. I would say sourdough. But for many tourists, it doesn't get more emblematic than the corner of Haight and Ashbury. Historically, San Francisco is a much smaller city. The area known as the Haight was deemed uninhabitable during the 1840s. Mark Twain noted, The wind was cold and benumbing, and blew with such force that we could hardly make headway against it. The fog was so thick that we could scarcely see 50 yards behind or before. I have no opinion of the six-mile ride in the clouds, but if I ever have to take another, I would want to leave the horse in the stable and go in a balloon. During the last part of the 19th century, the Committee on Outside Lands helped irrigate the area to attract new homeowners as the population of the city was a booming. The Hay District was attracting fun goers from the city with its amusement park and racetracks. After the 1906 earthquake and fire, the Hate was used as a refugee camp. Many decided to stay where they were, turning the Hate into an affluent suburb of San Francisco throughout the 1920s. However, as the Great Depression forced many families to double up into a single house, the neighborhood became more working class. This slow decline of regulations allowed the counterculture of the 1960s to find drugs, oddities, and far out ideas on the corners and shops of the hate. The big turning moment for our story is in 1966, when the first head shop, Ron and Jay Thelen's psychedelic shop, opened in the hate in 1966. Francisco, I think San Francisco is the holy city. I think it's going to be the Mecca of the West. And uh, what I'm going to propose in. Turn on, tune in, drop out. This would attract many more famous icons to move to and hang out in the hate. Famous musical icons of the late 60s like the Grateful Dead and Janis Joplin would call the hate their home. You could buy a Victorian style house with gables for an affordable price and be as reckless as you wanted. Probably the residents giving the most soul to the neighborhood were the Diggers, an anarchist group from the early 60s featuring Peter Coyote. And 1967 happened. Hippies were in full swing and the usual hype of getting to San Francisco was doubled because of the Monterey Pop Festival. This pushed the hippie culture into the mainstream. The Diggers would hold a stage street theater event called the Death of the Hippie to mock the growth and acceptance to those who don't want to be so easily defined. The late 60s would be a decline in safety for the hate. Hardcore drug use and crime skyrocketed. Eventually the cheap prices and continuation of flocking tourists with cash packed wallets and nothing to buy open for the 80s when corporate America could step in and open a gap in a Ben and Jerry's. Now, a reimagined past exists in the hate for those who desire yesteryears. Today's letter comes from the Diggers. Money is an unnecessary evil. It is addicting. It is a temptation to the weak. Most of the violent crimes of our city in some way involve money. It can be hoarded, blocking the free flow of energy, and the giant energy hordes of Montgomery Street will soon give rise to a sudden and thus explosive release of this trapped energy, causing much pain and chaos. As part of the city's campaign to stem the cause of violence, the San Francisco Diggers announce a 30-day period beginning now during which all responsible citizens are asked to turn in their money. No questions will be asked. Bring money to your local digger to free distribution to all. The digger will then liberate its energy according to the style of whoever receives it. The 
For the details, we're talking mostly retro features. Orange stitching, bar tacks, 501 without the double X, but there's a capital A above the lot and no mini XX. This capital A above the lot number is the main detail that differentiates the 1967 pair from other years 66 to 7. There's nothing definitive for what the A actually stands for. My best guess is that they had to take off the double X because it was no longer double X Amaskia denim and they just wanted to say something else that was saying it was the best of its kind, so they put an A there, but it obviously didn't last. Now looking at this historic pair, you can see that it says Made in USA on it, but in the Japanese recreations, they did not include that small detail. If you're able to get a rigid pair new, then it should come with a simple but unique cloth bag, and maybe even a box. I found three pairs for the 1967 501s. Of course, there is a rigid pair. Comes with the flasher guarantee ticket and the white canvas sash. There's a light blue pair with fading down the legs called Rusty Effect. And I found one more scrolling through old catalogs, a 1967 501 dark blue called Scent Away. It seems to have some nice whiskering that's around the knees and in the pelvic region. And you can really tell the dark blue from the orange stitching. Honestly, you stand more of a chance tracking down an actual historic pair from the era than these LDC pairs. Like the 53s, these are a creation of the Japanese LDC line and weren't widely available. The 1967 501 is one of these rare pairs, along with the 1953 501s, 1927s, 1917s, those are pretty scarce as well. I'm glad I got to do this episode. It was a nice chance to include the Hate Ashbury. I myself learned more about the diggers and became more curious about them. I hope you learned something too. A big shout out to my Patreon members, especially Evan Gutierrez. Thank you guys very much. Plans start at a dollar a month. You get special features and it helps make the channel even better. I'm Den. Thanks for watching Den and Denim. Love your jeans.